In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a sleep method in JavaScript. Languages like .NET, Python, and Java have a sleep method. This allows a method to pause and wait for a certain amount of time and then continue execution of its code. JavaScript does provide a set timeout method where you can pass a function to execute after a certain amount of time. However, with the addition of async and await in JavaScript, we can write the solution in a more elegant way. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. For this demonstration over here, I've created a little app that shows Spinner for two seconds, removes it, and then replaces it with some text. Instead of using the set timeout method over here, we're going to create a sleep method just like in Python, Java, and .NET. After it finishes sleeping for a period of time, it's going to go ahead and hide the Spinner and then show the text order complete. Let's take a look at what this code will look like. For our set timeout, we're going to remove that. So I'm going to delete that timeout take the code that was inside there and place it inside our method. The way that our code is going to work is it's going to call load data and inside load data it's going to go ahead and show the spinner and then we want it to sleep for a little bit so that the spinner stays on the screen. To do that we're going to create a brand new method called sleep and instead of passing milliseconds in like we do with the timeout we're just going to pass in seconds so we're just going to pass in two and since this function is using await we need to mark it as async. This is where the real magic comes into play. We're going to go ahead and define our sleep method. It's going to take in seconds, as we noted. And the way that this is going to work is we're going to return a new promise. This is the trick. Since we return a promise, a wait over here is going to wait for that promise to finish resolving before it continues onto the next line of code. The way that a promise will resolve is as follows. If we look at the definition of our promise constructor over here, we'll see that it takes in an executor. So this is a function that it will execute. One of the parameters that it takes in is something called resolve. When we're done doing all of our code inside of the function that we pass in, we call resolve. Well, let's go ahead and create that executor function over here. So the executor function, we're going to do it as an arrow function, and it takes resolve in. Well, how do we wait a certain period of time and then call? resolve? Well, the answer is set timeout. So we're going to call set timeout. So as you know, set timeout takes a function in and it's going to call it after a certain period of time. The second parameter of set timeout is time in milliseconds. So since we're passing seconds in, we need to convert that and all we have to do is times that by 1000. Now when we refresh our application over here, we can see the spinner stays for two seconds and then hides, and you can see that this code is a lot nicer looking. Technically, we're still using set timeout, but you can see we have this sleep method over here, and it looks so much nicer. We don't have to take this code and package it up into the set timeout. Instead, we can sleep for a little bit over here. Then we can go ahead and hide the spinner and display the text. And as I mentioned, the set timeout is still being used underneath the hood, but this syntax is much more elegant. You might be asking, what are some of the use cases of using the sleep method? Well, in our example over here, it was so that we could test our spinner to make sure that it was working. Maybe in another application, you decide that you want to use the sleep method to make sure that the spinner stays on the screen for a little period of time. Another use case is that maybe you're doing a whole bunch of API requests one after another. In between those API requests, you want to have a little bit of a delay so that perhaps you don't hit your throttling limit with whatever API provider that you're using. And there there are many more use cases for using a sleep method such as this. Let me know in the comments if you've also used the sleep method in other languages and how you used it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.